Morning, Ellen. Good morning, Dirk. <clears throat> Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Doing okay. Good morning. Good to see you. See you.
That's what they do in the monastery. You don't say, hey, love that. So. <laughs> <clears throat> so we can start with prayers. Who's got Unze? So we'll begin. We'll begin with prayers to Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge, teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully in perfect with Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, for destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, for destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who will rise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, 
a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold. To you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge. To you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omnipotent teacher, feel devotion like merits and good qualities. To the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I go for refuge. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha by the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma. May I obtain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. <clears throat> Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning of time and rejoice in the virtuous action of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen. May I obtain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O my masters, my Edoms, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accept in these out of your boundless compassion. Please send forth waves of your blessing. Edom, Guru, Ratna, Mandala, Kam, Nirtiyami. Heart of Perfection Wisdom, I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagawan was dwelling on the mass of Vulture's Mountain on Rajjahara together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra, Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. 
In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond air, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, equal to, equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as a truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared, Tayata. Gati Gati, Peragati, Parasam Gati, Bodhisoha. Repeat the mantra 21 times. Jaraputra, <clears throat> the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of Lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. I'd like to do the uh, Guru Shay seven line prayer. I'll mute it, it's okay. Is it working? No. Doing something. Sex is so good. 
Can you put that on the? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. I've heard that it helps to have our iPhones turned off. Is that right? Yeah. No. You're okay with your cell phone on, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, to fulfill the needs of all beings at the various levels of understanding. understanding. We request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so, thank you for showing up vaccinated bodhisattvas. <laughs> you know, I still need to be careful, of course, <clears throat> and encourage um, uh, those who are hesitant. Um, uh, like, you know, conventional um, the conventional world, the relative world, um, the world of cause and effect is a world of probabilities, right? So um, uh, it means like vaccination still that the percentage, right? It's like a hundred percent. So it's very interesting when the vax deniers or anti-vaxxers, they want certainty, right? Hundred percent go wrong, right? Um, and we have to say, well, um, what are you doing now? That's a hundred percent in the conventional relative world. Nothing. There's no hundred percent conventional relative world. It so is, you know, a certain percentage. We can say a hundred percent emptiness, because um, then we're talking absolute world, right? Ultimately, find anything that exists um, by itself from its own side, inherently existing with its own qualities, you know, uh, we're just going to find um, uh, interdependent. So uh, it's kind of ironic, right? So of course, human psychology is that, um, particularly from Gestalt point of view, is that the need determines the field. In other words, uh, if we're really, really hungry, all we're thinking about is food, you know, uh, and then everyone looks like our meal. <laughs> so uh, it's so interesting when people's needs um, are, you know, for um, certainty, uh, they'll try to create certainty, even if it's um, in an impossible situation. So of course, from our point of view, most people are upside down. They're looking for certainty uh, where there can't be certainty, and then they think things that are uh, certain are relative. So we're upside down. So earlier I had a discussion with a uh, Dharma person I haven't met yet who said everything is impermanent. And she's very depressed. Well, of course, if you think everything's impermanent, you should be depressed, right? It means everything goes away, nothing lasts. Um, so what's the point? You get to nihilism. But uh, I hope everyone that at least studies with me knows that 
uh, that everything is permanent. So there must be some permanent things. I don't even have to ask people to raise their hands, right? Because I all know, you know, at least a few permanent things, right? <laughs> like that. So uh, when we misunderstand reality, we're thinking that, uh, you know, things like vaccines or health issues should be 100%. Um, uh, but instead, some people go to like 100% doubt. So if like the vaccine is like, mm, let's say 95%, right? Then uh, it's realistic for me to have also 5% doubt, is it right? Oh, you know, which means like, okay, so I'm still watching my health, you know, like not being a total idiot. So I'm not going around going, did I lose the sound here? No. Uh, so I'm not going around, it feels different, but maybe. So I'm not going around thinking I'm immortal now. I'm still careful, right? So that's the middle way, you know, thinking, well, there's 5% chance, <laughs> maybe, right? And then you have to have other causes and conditions to come together. So we should understand how causes and conditions and interdependence works because then that gives you what's called confidence. You know, then confidence means like we know how to handle ourselves in the middle way. We don't have to like um, err, think everything has to be uh, absolute reality 100%, or we don't have to think uh, everything is um, merely just causes and conditions on that side. So we're in the middle, right? So um, you know, we, we understand. Uh, emptiness and uh, nature of mind, and ultimate nature of phenomena, and, you know, we, we still brush our teeth and take care of ourselves. Isn't that right? <laughs> In the middle way, right? Like that. So <clears throat> I think we can uh, continue to uh, do the middle way here uh, and, uh, you know, be reasonably safe. We can't be 100% safe. Like if somebody comes and says, is your temple 100% safe? We could say no it's it's a high percentage <laughs> and we should be asking well are you safe <laughs> right <laughs> and if people say i'm safe then we say okay you know then uh tell us how you're safe but we don't need to be i'm not interested in being aggressive about asking people like mailing people like uh you know i'm interested in having a conversation because uh, the illness and the health issues are avenues for having a conversation or having an interaction. Um, so you won't be like carting people at the door. But for a while, I think it's just important that we just have our refuge um, people and um, you know guests that we, we know for sure, right? So uh, then uh, we have a high degree of safety. But the idea is we build a we build a culture of like sanity, right? That has to do with sanity and safety. I mean, like, if you have, if your doubts are too big, that uh, that's not really your fault. Then please be remote, you know. And if you're taking care of yourself and you feel like you can come, then please come. You don't have to stand this close to somebody for 15 minutes, right? I don't know if I'd want anybody that close for 15 minutes, right? <laughs> so we have. Uh, a big area and we have an um, air purifier there too. And air, right? Nice. <clears throat> so we're today going to talk um, about the next link in dependent origination called uh, um, craving. <laughs> right. Sanskrit like Trishna, like craving, you know, like thirst. Um, so I'm going to read from um, from Kappa's Lamlin Chenmo, that great treatise on stages of the path, um, uh, with a translation by um, Mr. Cutler and others. So, um, Lama Kappa. 
This means both craving not to be separated from pleasant feelings and craving a separation from painful feelings. The statement in the sutra that craving is caused by feeling means that feelings accompanied by ignorance cause craving. Where there's no ignorance, craving does not occur, even if feelings are present. This being the case, contact is the experiencing of the object and feeling is the experience of birth or the fruition of karma. Hence, when these two are complete, experience is complete. There are three types of craving, one for each of the three realms. That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, uh, there are many commentaries, but um, what I want to focus on for a moment is um, feelings accompanied by ignorance cause craving. Where there's no ignorance, craving does not occur even if feelings are present. That's pretty important. So uh, in some uh, traditions or religions or places, you know, uh, we think if we, um, you know, get rid of the feelings, get rid of emotions, get rid of pleasant feelings or unpleasant feelings or neutral feelings, uh, and we become numb, then um, we're all set, right? But that's not our path. We, we understand that if we remove the ignorance, uh, feelings will still be there. We still will have a pleasant feeling when we eat our chocolate, an unpleasant feeling when we um, you know, clean the cat box, and <laughs> you know, a neutral feeling when we're just kind of driving along, right? So the feelings are there. You know, we need the emotions and the feelings and we need the contact, it's, we don't need the ignorance. But uh, many times when people are beginning meditators and even long time meditators, the idea is, oh, uh, I'm gonna suppress the feelings, I'm gonna eliminate feelings, and I'm gonna be kind of um, you know, totally numb, and that's nirvana, I'm, I'm out of trouble. So that's, that's not our path. <clears throat> We want to overcome addictions, uh, overcome the craving. We actually need to feel the craving, right? And we have to identify the ignorance, and then we can make a different choice. So when we want to eat that second slice of chocolate cake, then we can notice, oh, uh, that's based on an ignorance. We could still remember our, the pleasant experience, but the ignorance is thinking that by continuing the experience indefinitely, we'll become satisfied. Because pleasant sensations, unpleasant sensations, neutral feelings, pleasant feelings are not going to last, right? So that's one area where we want to uh, really notice impermanence. But uh, we could still say, I, I want uh, the pleasant feeling to continue, but I know that if I have another more sugar, I'll get nauseated, right? <laughs> Also, it's when we're trying to change our behavior, want to suppress the urges, right? We do want to stop the behavior, so we're, we're going to say, um, no, I don't want another piece. But the experience of craving might still be there, right? But then the wisdom minds can say, okay, we won't. Uh, we identify it, that's a thirst, that's a longing, I just want to continue this experience. <clears throat> but if I try to continue it, what's going to happen? Is it possible to do that kind of analytic meditation where when we're in the midst of you know, some strong experience? Yes, 
but only if it's accompanied by a very strong concentration, very strong shamatha practice. That's why I <laughs> want I might do that. Um, the best practice is the one you actually do, and please do shamatha for at least 24 minutes, something like that. Because without the ability to stay with something, um, we'll go, yeah, I know. I know I shouldn't be smoking, but you know, dot, dot, dot. So there's, there's some uh, information, but it's not a true insight. It doesn't become a true realization like that. Long as some is very concise, though, if the ignorance is removed, uh, we don't have to remove the feeling. On the um, Yeshe <clears throat> uh, book, uh, one of the first books that was put together from his talks by Jonathan Landau, uh, likes to talk about uh, chocolate. So, introduction to Tantra is a book that I've recommended. Maybe everybody here, I don't know, maybe not yet. So I know many people have read it already, but um, Lama Yeshe liked chocolate, didn't he? he must have liked like um, pasta too, don't you think? Namkai Norbo Rinpoche, who I studied with for a time, lived in Italy for a long time, and he developed um, a real strong uh, attachment to pasta. <laughs> I mean, his family said he had to lose weight, so maybe he had to give it up. So <clears throat> it's the ignorance. So what is the ignorance? The ignorance is that at this, talking at this level of craving, the ignorance is uh, that we can continue the uh, pleasurable sensations, or we can continue to avoid the unpleasant sensations, or we can continue uh, indefinitely to have the neutral sensations. Right now, we're not talking about nature of self or nature of mind, we're just looking very much at that feeling contact level, you know, and the ignorance is that basically more is better and I can just have it indefinitely. <clears throat> Uh, apropos to this discussion, um, uh, I'm going to um, attend in the, the Mindful Recovery and Healing Group that um, we're uh, switching to four o'clock today, like that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I haven't envisioned the group as just being for, you know, Alcoholic addicts and traditional 12 step. I envision the group, which I started over 20 years ago, um, so that we could just focus in on craving, right? <laughs> and not be embarrassed uh, by saying, um, This is my special craving. Because usually in Dharma talks like this, or even in general, we're not talking about our specific kind of uh, craving, you know? I sometimes say my specific craving is my opinions or who I think I am, right? But uh, it's easier when doing Dharma practice to um, pick something fairly concrete that has to do with the feeling level, right? Because a lot of times we just go directly to one, like go after the nature of self or go after one of the many obscurations to nature of mind. But sometimes it's actually more helpful to like pick something, getting a little feedback of that. You know that? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> sometimes, and in most of the case, uh, when doing actual Dharma practice, uh, you want to have like, okay, I'm going to eliminate obscurations to the nature of mind and these strong emotions, but you, it's good to like pick, you know, one kind of very specific kind of thingy. 
<clears throat> this happens a lot in monastic situations where you think you're just doing um, deep study and dharma practice, but um, the teacher will find your. Should I stop talking now? No, we need you to keep talking. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> our technical assistant, Brett, who started us, um, has been gone for a couple of months now. And so we should, I should be doing prayers to Brett, our technical assistant. Like, Please, Brett, come back from wherever you are. Um, but I'm sure. Uh, we can tolerate a little technical difficulties. So the, the craving that helps us the most when doing actual Dharma practice is pick something that, um, you know, it's your own private habit that you want to continue, right? I use chocolate a lot, but actually I can do without chocolate. So I, I, I like to identify other things that, you know, would really be, it would really be upsetting if I couldn't continue that pleasurable experience, or it would really be upsetting if I couldn't, you know, discontinue it completely, a certain uh, feeling, right? So just recently, um, uh, in the middle of the day, like a leaf blower came. <laughs> so I thought like I had conquered the leaf blower thing. You know, because I've talked, maybe I haven't talked with you in the past, but I thought, you know, leaf blowers, that's like what, I mean, really annoying. So I work on, okay, I can just totally accept the sound. Um, uh, and accept that you know that there's a feeling of aversion, but I don't have I don't have to make that aversion permanent, right? Or kind of you know amp it up. Because there's no way we can say I'm not. You know, you'd have to be really high level, uh, complete Buddha almost to say these flowers don't bother me. It's fine. No, no, there's always going to be some aversion. But but you know, then wanting to maintain that aversion and have the you know idiots go away. Last week, it was like, I almost felt like I could feel a feeling like I'm going to run out the door <laughs> and tell him to stop. You know, it was like, what? You know, nutty, right? You know, get, get out of here. You're ruining my day, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, it's like, aren't you done yet? Why don't you get a job and awake and stuff? You know, you go on that kind of rant. I still had the, uh, you know, I still had feelings of aversion, right? Uh, you know, so the craving isn't just for something more to continue. The craving, the Amazon Kappa puts out, is also for something to stop, right? Okay. So I got through that. But now, uh, so that's back on my list, like we close. So it used to be, um, and I don't want to claim on this, but since being in India, my, my aversion to like traffic jams is way down. I can't say it couldn't come up, but it'd be way down, right? But still, I would feel the feelings like, this is unpleasant, right? All the unpleasant is away, so we're craving an end. When people are suicidal or suicidal ideation, they're craving an end, right? They want non-existence. And when we're craving immortality, we're craving existence. So the craving, the craving thing is it's interesting. So I'll just read that one more time from uh, Sankapa. This means both craving not to be separated from pleasant feelings and craving a separation from painful feelings. But where there is no ignorance, craving does not occur, even if feelings are present. So, um, 
one of the benefits of um, uh, modern psychotherapy, modern counseling, is that um, over the last maybe 100 years or something, uh, is uh, there's like therapeutic benefit in healing by people admitting or sharing or processing like their feelings, right? So just to say, okay, I really felt like running out and just stomping on that person with the leaf blower. <laughs> uh, gives us the opportunity to uh, examine uh, our craving and our feelings with uh, a wisdom mind, right? So a lot, sometimes I make kind of fun, as Dana knows, of, you know, Therapists that just go, well, how'd you feel when that happened? Uh -huh, how'd you feel when that happened? Uh, but sometimes that's a, as she knows, that's a necessary big part of healing practice because when we're trying to overcome things, either attachments to pleasant or aversions to unpleasant or aversions to neutral, or just attachment to being neutral, then uh, you know, speaking to um, those cravings. You know, speaking to our feelings really can liberate. It can give us an opportunity, a space to examine with a wisdom mind. Because if we suppress the feeling aspect, right, of this chain of interdependence, then the chances are we're also not going to look at it because we think we've dealt with it, right? So, uh, of course, in couple therapy, it's harder because you have to transform, uh, I think you're an idiot. To, I, I'm feeling right now like you don't understand what I'm saying. It's a little different, right? <laughs> so you need to bring in a wisdom mind, say, okay, I'm gonna own that feeling. I, I, I feel like um, I wanna get away from your, your stupidity right now. So, but we don't have to make someone uh, have that as an essential quality, right? We're going to say, my husband's a jerk. Um, women don't say jerk, by the way. I don't know. Is that true? They don't really say jerk. They don't say. I usually don't say my wife's a jerk. It's something else. We don't use that word. But, <laughs> but we don't have to say that essential quality exists over them inherently, right? Because we know the only people that. Uh, you know, we're projecting and we're, we're putting an essential uh, quality which is adventitious to the intuitive nature. So it might be nice, you know, Dan and I will work more closely together in couples to, you know, say, um, I, so, I am so delighted with the essentially good qualities of the intuitive nature. However, I really want to get away from your stupid qualities that I know are adventitious and with the right motivation and contain. When using like uh, nonviolent communication, um, would, you, would you be willing to work on that? <laughs> and then the husband goes, Well, now I'm feeling. Oh, a cat. <laughs> or they could say, actually, um, with a wisdom mind, like, thank you so much for being honest. You know, I really appreciate that you're willing to uh, be honest. Not only are addressing a positive quality, but you're addressing my uh, adventitious learned qualities of uh, being a clueless jerk. So thank you so much. I'm really, really willing to work on that. <laughs> so the uh, the craving aspect is where um, is based upon an ignorance that um, you know more is better, or that we can permanently get away from certain things, or permanently keep certain things that by nature cannot be got away from. Them. Yeah, that makes sense, right? So uh, it's okay if that most people say, you know, I'm feeling this and that. You know, these are failing states, um, but they don't have 
uh, and craving's a state too, right? We all want to know like the house of us or something really bad. But uh, in our tradition, we, we, we want to acknowledge that there is the mind to it, right? So when I'm working with people that are struggling with physical conditions, Within and recovery, even for a long time. So I'd say we were, you know, feel like having these feelings of craving for doing a line of coke or beer or whatever you're doing. And when they say no, what do you think I'm thinking? Bullshit, right? It'd be very rare, like you're kind of doing the addict and then. Even when you stop the behavior, you have no more cravings. It's impossible, right? It's impossible. So, realistically, you say, I, I did have a lot of cravings. I noticed them. I applied the antidotes. You know, I didn't walk down the liquor aisle. I didn't get together with my uh, supplier, you know, whatever. Just don't. You know, throw your Xanax down the toilet, you know, because then it goes into the water system. <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. Don't, take, don't take your oxycodone and then put it into the uh, water system. Drop it off at the pharmacy, right? So, uh, I should stop here and see if there's any um, useful, that's been useful for you, right? <laughs> yeah, let's pass the mic. Hey. Hello. Um, I was this last week, um, I was having my house re roofed. And the roofers were there 12 hours a day, banging and spanking on the roof. And I was trying to do my practice. And of course, you know, it's like leaf blowers and they're like right over my head and everything. And it's really hard to meditate. And so, you know, I, I, at first it didn't bother me as much, but each day that they kept coming back and at 7 a.m., and staying until 7 p.m. I, I was still trying to practice in the middle of that. And I know it's impermanent because I know they're not going to be there forever doing my roof, but but they were there longer than I expected, my expectations. And so I finally just had to stop trying to meditate because I just couldn't meditate. I just I would tell myself this is impermanent, you know, and yes, this is banging noise and it's really up you know, jarring to me and all that sort of stuff. And, but I finally just had to get up and I mean, have you had that experience? You said leaf blowers and some people, they tried to let it go through, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But when they're doing it for 12 hours a day for, for what ended up being six days, you know, that's, that's way longer than I expected. And, yeah. and so I couldn't, I couldn't quite just talk myself through the meditation well enough. Yeah, so um, it's very difficult, um, you know, to do shamatha or do common meditation uh, and insight meditation even when conditions are perfect, right? So um, that would be too high an expectation that um, and you would uh, think, oh, this is wonderful, all phenomena are inherently empty, so uh, I'll just uh, meditate on inherent emptiness of uh, roofers. That's too much, right? So uh, I know you're able to get out a little bit, right? But the big, the big thing is dealing with ignorance is not putting up a perfectionist thing and being gentle with yourself, like, oh, even Dalai Lama wouldn't want to be here all day, right? Well, finally, finally by Friday, I just, they came and I just got in my car and just drove away. I, I didn't matter. I just was going to go do every errand I could possibly think of because I didn't want to be there with them. Yeah. <laughs> One time the Dalai Lama was 
Or is saying like, I'm good for about 15 minutes with kids. <laughs> 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 yeah. So um, it's using a wisdom mind to know our limitations, right? So, so when the uh, craving looks like it's gonna tip over into like adverse behaviors, we can go, oh, okay, I'm I'm pretty dry. Well, that's also assuming you can get away from whatever is bothering you. That sometimes I have things that I can't get away from, and so then I'm like, how do I? You know, I don't. Sometimes I distract myself by doing things. You know, how do you deal with that over the long haul? <laughs> so um, uh, you do dharma complaining. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, you know, my root teacher was uh, very honest. And sometimes he's, you know, I say, well, how do you deal with this? And they go, well, I'm not dealing very well with it, just it's samsara. Right? Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, he didn't use slang like it sucks or something, you know, to say, you know, like, because of course um, he was, uh, he got um, diabetes and uh, problems in India, and uh, then he had kidney problems, right? So yeah, how's it going? You know, he was on this dialysis. You go, know, you know, just go and, and wobble at the market. But there wasn't, in that, you know, it wasn't like you know, a further, you know, it was just. That's feeling, right? He didn't have an ignorance like it shouldn't be, you know, it's like he knew the cognitive conditions and why he was doing it. But of course, uh, um, at some point, he just said, I, I don't want to go to dialysis anymore. One, it's, it feels bad, and two, it's wasting a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, you know, there's, there's nobody that you know, doesn't want to have, you know, pleasant conditions. So we shouldn't say, oh, I'm craving unpleasant conditions because that's good for my practice. So some people have uh, read um, uh, Dr. Kenzie's book, you know, what makes you not a Buddhist, and, and uh, what's, what's the other book? Uh, ever. Drinks bourbon? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and of course, he has some good talks, but can say, I'm sure, you know, it's like saying, of course, I, I'm, I, I want pleasurable surroundings. I don't want unpleasurable surroundings. You know, we're talking about the worldly dharmas, right? It's just, you know, to be honest about our feelings, but we use the wisdom mind to kind of know what our limitations are. So that, that's smart, you know. Yeah, because we know roots are usually done in a couple of days. But sometimes maybe because there's so many gables or they have There's a hand up. Who am I supposed to be talking to now? We don't know. Otto has her hand up in Zoom. I can't see I can't see Otto's hand, so but let's see. Is this will the system work in Zoom? Hi. Pick up Can you hear me? Hi, I'm in Sedona, Arizona, <laughs> on a walk with the sun. Um, so I was interested in, you know, this concept of ignorance being uh, the cause of kind of the difficulties. And I wanted to ask, hopefully this comes out right. When I tried to um, talk myself or reason myself out of my feelings, it doesn't necessarily work. But can you kind of talk about what the difference is between trying to logic your way out of something and accessing your wisdom mind? So actually you're not reasoning your way out of your feelings. That's the whole point. We can't reason our way out of our feelings. Right, that's my, been my experience. Our, our mind. It's a, a delusion that we 
get permit and stay away from allowing people out or allowing roofers or allowing the leaf blowers. Or that we can permanently stay in a pleasurable state. So that that's that is that, you know the feelings will still be there. But the, the wisdom mind, is there something like, can you maybe define that for me a little bit further? Is it, it's not just made up of logic though, correct? Log logic is how things must be. Okay. Uh, experiential wisdom is to see them as they are, just seeing being operative. You know? So it's good to work together because uh, for example, like, I use a lot of like on the summer you're driving the freeway and uh, you you see you know water and instead of thinking that's water you're going okay that has to be uh, a you know, mirage right so of course we're going on experience but also logic but we're still having uh, the experience that it's uh, water but it can't be so right so logic can be you know, very helpful by saying that it looks as if uh, because uh, I'm sleepy, it looks as if there's a monster in the room, but it's just a cat. So we need both. We need spiritual, which is based on entire experience, but also direct seeing, and then we need logic. Logic uh, okay. how it must be. Mm -hmm. So maybe like going back to the chocolate cake, as opposed to just trying to talk yourself out of the chocolate cake, you can also access like, oh, I feel better the next day if I don't eat so much sugar. So it's like a more holistic, uh, yeah, that's, like you know, it's so, all of it, perhaps. Yeah, so that's based on experience. So that's a wisdom yeah. mind too. You know, when we say yeah. wisdom, it doesn't mean some lightning flash of, you know, the Holy Spirit knocks St. Paul off the donkey on the way to Damascus, right? It's just very straightforward and obvious. Like, it oh, is yeah. what it is. Yeah. I'm remembering that, you know, I'll feel crappy the next morning or within right. an hour. And then on top of that, I've gained a pound or two. Unfair, right? So that's a wisdom mind, too. So we don't always think the wisdom mind, of course, is seeing things as they are. But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's that state. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Kind of, we talked about two kinds of ignorance. Um, uh, uh, and Asanga's the differentiation between the middle and the extremes. He says, you know, ignorance is just kind of a cluelessness. You just like zoned out, you're not even looking over there. Uh, Dharma Kirti, that we'll get to the Buddha Dharma program, says uh, it's not just that, it's like you know the wrong thing. Right. Yeah. I think it's harder to get you off the wrong thing than just when somebody says, no, I know, I, I, I know the vaccines are created by the Chinese and the Democrats are like that. So it's hard to get people off that, right? You, you try to challenge it and then you have to obviously I can't trust you to challenge it. Whereas if somebody just says, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't know, is that helpful? Yes, very. Thank you. Thank you, Lama. Yeah. So we're not even talking about how, you know, we're transmuting uh, in Tantra, we're transmuting uh, craving. Uh, you know, just talking about like direct seeing and with the wisdom mind, of course, uh, the transformational processes, the visionary uh, 
in the other processes that it's, it's working with are the lift and the paving, right? Like in the gyms and in the paving, so that uh, in a sense you do get to have something that is permanent and beautiful at the same time, and pleasurable at the same time, because the permanent uh, the feeling of the pleasure and the beauty uh, is based on the wisdom mind. So that uh, emptiness, so to speak, the mind can appear in a beautiful form, right? So because there's a wisdom mind there, um, in Tantra, uh, you can have a type of cake um, without gaining weight. You're combining the wisdom mind and appearance and uh, at the same time. But that's why Tantra is tricky because usually people are approaching it without correct understanding parents and it just depends on the cost of attachment. So I mean none of us in this job are out there in um remote land are doing it that way, so it's good like it. Mama, didn't you once say that if you could realize that the chocolate cake didn't exist, that you would s solve the problem? Mm -hmm. um, no. So the chocolate cake has no inherent existence. Um, it's very different than saying the chocolate cake has lots of sugar and calories. If we have a very profound understanding that um, uh, the chocolate cake is uh, based on causes and conditions, it has lasting happiness and is mere appearance, right? Then um, and we could see the chocolate cake as being like part of the whole mandala. And of course, we're not looking at conventional chocolate cake anymore, right? So we may not have the same craving for the chocolate cake, right? But when we eat the actual chocolate cake, even though we're uh, realized, we're still getting uh, get the calories. That makes sense, right? I have, I have a suggestion for you about the leaf blower. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I make no claims about this but it seems to work okay yeah. uh, my little kitty java doesn't like leaf blowers so when the leaf blower comes into our yard she puts her paws over her face and then it doesn't go away so then she scrunches herself up and stretches and then she goes down and picks a bedroom with a with a bedspread and she gets under the bedspread and seemingly the leaf blower goes away and she goes back to sleep. <laughs> that sounds like, you know, that sounds like she's got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, in that case, I just went to another office where the, you know, there wasn't the leaf blower. Yeah, yeah. That's one advantage moving around the building now. But I like the curling up idea. You know, so maybe you'll find me in a fetal position. <laughs> so understanding that, you know, uh, the chocolate cake or alcohol or you know, yeah, there's something that has no inherent existence uh, in a very deep way will um, uh, cut down, you know, of course, uh, the craving, which is based in, on ignorance. There still might be some desire, you know, you can have a desire, like I just want to zone out. But um, if we do do it, 
then then we're going to have the physical effect, right? So uh, understanding nature, mind, and emptiness uh, does not mean that we're going to, you know, transmute alcohol into amrita, right? That's still going to be you know, we're not going to take the calories out of the chocolate cake. Some Buddhist traditions or some people have made that mistake, right? Of thinking, you know, it's like enlightened person um, would be able to, you know, uh, do those kind of activities, but I haven't I've never seen it. So, you know, my, my teacher used to say, you know, um, kind of jokingly, but kind of serious. Like you can smoke cigarettes if when you smoke the uh, smoke can come out of your fingers and you can drink and you can put your hand up and smell the sun. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Something like that. Or you can kill when uh, you know you can snap your fingers and a bird will just be eaten. Will come together again and fly. And Chenji uh, Rinpoche, one of my dog chen teachers, used to say, when, when, I, when I put a bowl of dog shit here and a bowl of yogurt here, and you don't care which one you eat, then you can say you've achieved your taste. Don't use that Mahamudra metaphor until you really can say that, right? So just to be humble. Some people make the mistake. They think you know you you can actually um, change you know physical reality. So I'm not I'm totally against that. You know, let's say the Mahasiddhas um, were able to do that, but you know I haven't met anybody that could do that. But confirm she still alive and exists. Um, alcohol poisoning, right? Or didn't transmit the alcohol at all. And there was some unfortunate crap in hand Sacramento yoga teacher four or five years ago that, you know, it's an Asha, right? You know, I'm going to sit underwater because I've oxygenated myself, right? So I can go longer than the normal few minutes. So that was a very unfortunate match. Out. Uh, we want to take care of in just obeying normal reality. Right? So what we do is we want to liberate that mind, right? And then we find mechanics properly and brush our teeth. That makes sense, right? So we're coming to the end here. Anybody have a complaint? So, actually, oh, okay. Hi. I'm looking at Hi, Lama. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I doubt if anybody dislikes uh, air blowers more than I, leaf blowers more than I do. Uh, in fact, when that's one of my favorite things about living where I live now is that I used to get them at seven in the morning twice, at least twice a week, and plus a bunch of other times during the week. So I had to actually, while I was there, I had to do, I had to learn how to deal with it a little bit because it was such a constant thing. Not that I have overcome it; I'm making no such claim. But I, but I was able to sort of sometimes, sometimes, just uh, make it my meditation object to to focus on it as and 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 also actually. Another thing that really helped me was realizing that the guys who were making the noise with those leaf blowers were probably getting paid minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And they were exposed to it much more than I was. They were just doing their job. Um, but then with that context, I, I, sometimes I could just say, according to something Mingyur Dorje once said, which was, he talked about, he had, there was a student who said he couldn't sleep at night because of the dogs barking. Mm -hmm. And then he noticed that in the morning during the loud puja with all the drums going and the chanting, the guy would fall asleep. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, just this, and it's true for me with the leaf blower. I recognize in my own 
world that yeah. I can take huge amounts of noise that I think are okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then you add this other thing that that I just have. So so a lot of it's my conceptual reaction to it rather than my physical reaction. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's it's the way I'm thinking about it rather than what it actually is. Exactly. That's that's yeah. my comment. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that's approaching a little you know from a little different angle. So this morning I've been talking about like. Uh, making sure we approach things very uh, solidly from sutra level, right? Which has to do with, uh, you know, antidotes and properly, you know, in this case, maybe even using uh, maybe the ignorance of antidote. Um, from Mahamudra Dzogchen point of view, uh, the ideas we've developed enough of um, stability and bodhicitta that. Uh, we can uh, experience directly, you know, the phenomena, right? <clears throat> and uh, you know, see it as uh, display, uh, and you know, make a fall into cognitive wavering, uh, forgetting uh, myself and cognitive wavering, uh, as well as people are people. Right? So um, that's. Uh, an important part of a practice if you're practicing from that level. So you want to start on something that's fairly easy, right? Um, you know, but uh, to be safe, you know, you first want to develop the sutra level antidotes. And then, so we have that as like in a backup plan. But uh, <laughs> so uh, Fortunately, Dirk's done enough practice, so he can say, okay, I'm just clinging with it and not forgetting uh, bodhicitta, right? So it's there, right? Um, uh, so the middle way is where you lose both uh, absolute and relative at the same time and do an ultimate practice. But uh, we always want kind of like a sutra level practice as a backup plan. So if you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to um, see the essential purity and uh, display of uh, root lowers, then uh, if our awareness begins to waver and then we forget uh, bodhicitta, then we can drop back to um, uh, you know, doing Vajan, doing sutra level practice, right? But sometimes we can. Um, you know, sustain Mahamudra uh, of Chen approach for like one day when they're hammering on the roof. And if it's a whole week, you know, we have to say, <laughs> I'm going for a drive like that. Um, but, uh, you know, the Sangha, we, in a sense, we want to be able to practice all the different yamas if it's appropriate, right? So we can say, hey, I'm just going to, um, like someone's uh, angry with us and we're just going to notice. Uh, oh, they're just angry with us, so I'm just going to hang with that. But we have to be very careful that we're not using that approach as a subtle uh, suppression, right? That happens a lot, you know. Oh, I'm just being aware of that. And building up over here, right? So it's like we say in recovery, sometimes when you're in a meeting, the addict is out in the parking lot doing push-ups. So the uh, important part is that uh, higher level practices like Dati Yoga and Mahamudra, they're not just moving you know, the ignorance off to the side, right? And we're still keeping our uh, relative ignorance um, in view, right? I mean, okay, here's, here's my idiot. I'm not trying to put the idiot back here. I'm keeping, you know, open space, but like I, I'm keeping my idiot in view here, right? <laughs> Thank you, Derek. That's helpful. Thank you. So last one? Yes. I was wondering how feelings of neutrality interact with craving. Uh, so uh Neutral is like we want to stay neutral. You know, so 
that's um, I frequently run into that when people go, it doesn't bother me. You know, like they're talking about their relationships or talking about some situation. Um, you know, whatever, you know, just think of any situation that's kind of bothersome, like your own behavior, your own behavior, and they go, like, you know, it doesn't really bother me. I'm okay. No, you're not. You know, you're not neutral at all. Or you have a moment of neutrality, you know, you have a moment of neutrality, and then, you know, where you're stuck in a traffic jam and you kind of go, that's okay. Mm -hmm. that's not real wisdom there, you're just kind of neutral. I mean, you try to hold on to that. But it doesn't last that long, it's like you say it's a patch. So we can't, you, you can't really hold on to neutral. You want to notice neutral. Neutral is hard to notice, but it's just that kind of thing. Oh, you know, I'm okay. Doesn't bother me. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. But after a while, it will bother you. <laughs> we have to be careful. We can't hold on to it. That's another thing that's slipping. Last question. Um, can you convert neutrality into something? Um, can you turn that neutral neutrality into something? I like to turn those things into challenge. So, not from something that's bothering, just turn them to instead of like saying that I'm dealing with it, takes motivation and effort. Uh, well, yeah, then you're, you're not trying to maintain the neutrality. You're, you're, you're adding something else as a coping skill. Okay. You're not really trans transforming the neutrality. You're, you're just saying. So can we do just one good coping? Yeah, that's a positive. That's a super level, like, low jump coping skill. You know, we're, okay, let's talk in a trial with you. It's okay, you know. It's not that hot, or we're not really in a rush anyway, or this is good for my practice. You know, something like that. But that's a that's, yeah. A lot of times, it, yeah, it, yeah. But actually, we're not maintaining the neutrality. Right. At that point, we're not neutral. We're, okay. we're trying to come up with, you know, in some ways, this is kind of good news. Yeah, which is where we, the most of the time. We have to do kind of low John coping skills, right? You know, most of the time we have, okay, this is kind of an obstacle, whether it's relative or whatever, and here's what I'm going to apply. You know, I mean, whatever people go, well, it's really good for my practice. <laughs> you know, but what? You know, okay, opportunities, practice, patience, or something like that. Or, you know, we're, we're just reframing it, right? Okay. Yeah, I would say this. Yeah, I, I always kind of do like, ah, oh, you should have been in New Delhi, you know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Does this mean there's one more question? Or... Yeah. Okay. One more. This is um, in succession to what you're talking about. So can you uh, can you describe a little bit better or, or a little more specifically the difference between applying a coping skill and transforming, coming back? to a place of neutrality that is wisdom mind rather than being able to recognize when you're transforming versus using a coping skill? Uh, transforming a little bit would, you know, be we're, we're trying to, uh, you know, use the, you know, how, See deeper into the uh, neutrality paths, you know, like that. So usually when I think of transforming, I think of, you know, uh, 
you know, Tantra style, right? Where we're visualizing this as a pure realm, right? So um, we're stuck in a traffic jam in a causeway, and you know, instead we're um, in our Dharma chariot in, in line to the Nakal Chakra, right? You know, something like that. You know, uh, from you know, capital W list in mind, uh, we're, we're not transforming anything. It's all already there. So it's, it's, uh, we're already knowing, like the neutral mind is 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 impermanent. So we're not trying to attach to it. Anyway, we're just doing it as it is. But most of the time, we either have to do some kind of antidote practice or some kind of uh, tantric practice because it's more than just seeing nature of awareness itself is uh, too difficult. But, um, we, we have to be very careful with, with transformation because it, you know, sometimes I hear people say, well, I use the energy of anger to transmute it into da da da, and that's a little bit having your cake and eat it too. So that can be too tricky. So by definite, you know, neutral feelings are feelings, so they're they're going to be you know passing. So for most of the time, you know, a wisdom mind is just going to be recognizing impermanence, where an ignorant mind is thinking that they're going to be permanent. I mean, that's the big problem: is we're upside down. We want impermanent things to be permanent, and permanent things we think either don't exist or. <laughs> so get on the ride. So thank you out there in uh, remote land. I hope everyone has been able to hear okay a little bit. So if so, <clears throat> I'm looking at a little screen on my on this pad here, but I, I don't think everyone's on here, right? So, they're just like maybe 12 little things, but there's more, right? So I don't, how does it, how does it change? Are, are you changing it? Rotating it? That's everyone on there? Oh, okay. Good. Hi, everybody. So also like, I, so everyone's so small. So that's why I'm doing this. Like, I have to pick it up, you know, I can't see, you know. <clears throat> Uh, so I, I guess I could, you know, pick it up like this, and then I still have to look at the camera like that, right? <laughs> but, but now I can see everyone's name, so I appreciate everyone being here. Oh my home. So let, let's do uh, closing prayers. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly obtain a state of Guru Buddha that lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the Supreme Jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen from the rise of growth, may that which has arisen not diminish but increase in one more. In the land of the circle by snow mountains, where the source of all happiness and good, on the hard branch of raising the tending council, please remain until some star ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, may the old of the teachings remain forever. May all my prayers achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all of our temporary and goals. Those are magical display of the deep importance of all of the truth ones, merciful giver of spring of the land of vast destruction to the virgins of my graves. Please remain always, unperishing, unchanging, and unfading. 
I will place by a great treasure in my depths of compassion. The judiciary, the master of lawless wisdom, by divine destroyer, the entire host of mine, sword up on my jewels, the new and sages, those on dry I make your questions of life. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Good to see everybody. So I'm I'm hanging out for the rest of the afternoon. So some of you will be taking off, some of you will be hanging out. Right? Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama. To be blowers and roofers. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Lama.